Welcome fellow plant enthusiasts, I'm Steven from Seeps Propagation Corner and I'm thrilled to bring you another crucial episode of The Foliage Files. In this series, we dive deep into the secrets of plant life, learn practical tips for caring and nurturing our own green companions, and explore the incredible diversity of plant species from around the globe. As we transition from summer to fall, it's that pivotal time of the year when we must contemplate the return of our cherished houseplants from their luxurious outdoor summer vacation to the cozy indoors. If you've been basking your plants in the great outdoors, you've undoubtedly witnessed the benefits of abundant summer sunlight, warmth, and humidity that have nourished your leafy treasures. However, as with many things in life, this blissful chapter must eventually come to an end. The transition back indoors can be complicated, but don't worry my fellow plant lovers, today I'll be your guide on this exciting journey. We'll explore when and how to bring your green companions back inside so you can ensure they thrive in the comfort of your home. So stay tuned as we unravel this essential guide. As we step into the first weeks of September, well before the chill of nights dips below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, it's prudent to start considering the relocation of your precious plants back indoors. Most indoor plants can't withstand temperatures below 45 degrees Fahrenheit, and we certainly don't want to test their resilience. Why the early start, you ask? The reason is simple, transitioning. When bringing our sun-loving plants back from their outdoor summer vacation, it's crucial to ease them into their indoor habitat rather than subjecting them to a sudden environmental shift. This transition takes time, and starting while the outdoor temperatures are still relatively warm affords us that luxury. It also provides us the opportunity to tend to essential outdoor tasks like repotting and cleaning without making a mess indoors. A helpful guideline to remember is to initiate this process at least two weeks before the average last frost date. This thoughtful planning ensures a smooth and comfortable return for your beloved houseplants as they prepare to hunker down for the winter season. When it comes to transitioning our plants back indoors, it's essential to exercise caution and follow a set of crucial steps. Without these precautions, your plants may endure shock, evident through excessive leaf loss, potential dieback, or wilting following abrupt changes in their environment. Since our indoor living conditions often differ significantly from the great outdoors, a gradual reintroduction of your plants into their indoor setting is the wisest approach. Let's delve into the essential steps we recommend along with some additional tips and tricks to ensure a seamless process and maintain the happiness of your beloved plants. Before taking any action, it's essential to ensure your indoor space is prepared. Changes may have occurred since your plants were last indoors. Perhaps you didn't move all of them outside, maybe you've added some new additions, we won't judge, or maybe there's an opportunity to optimize your space. Take stock of your plant stands, saucers, pots, shelves, hooks, grow lights, and any other equipment to ensure you have everything you need. While not mandatory, it's highly recommended to clean both the inside and outside of your windows to maximize the incoming light levels. Completing this task before bringing your plants inside will save you the hassle of navigating around them during your cleaning efforts. Before bringing your plants inside, it's important to take steps to prevent any unwanted pests from hitching a ride. Even if you don't suspect any pests, it's a smart move to inspect and treat your plants to ensure a pest-free indoor environment. Unwanted visitors could include spider mites, mealybugs, scale insects, snails, slugs, millipedes, spiders, or earwigs. We recommend following these steps to ensure a smooth process. The process begins with a thorough inspection. First, carefully examine both the upper and lower sides of your plant's leaves and stems for any telltale signs of pest activity. Should you spot potential pests, the next step is a dental cleaning. Prepare a mixture of mild dish soap and water, and use a soft cloth or sponge to delicately wipe down the leaves and stems. Once the soapy solution has dried, move on to an outdoor shower for your plants. Give them a thorough dousing with a hose to dislodge any lingering pests. 
to fortify your plant's defenses, up for safe spraying after it's fully dry. You can choose between an insecticidal soap spray or a neem oil mixture to protect against pests. As a precaution, begin with a test on a few leaves to observe how your plant responds. If you suspect any pests lurking in the soil, it might be time for the soil soak treatment. Prepare a bucket of lukewarm water mixed with mild soap and immerse the entire pot for approximately 15 minutes. Mealybugs, for example, can survive for months without a host plant and hide in small cracks. Neglecting these steps could lead to indoor infestations that could harm your other plants. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Although not every one of your outdoor plants will require this step, it's highly likely that at least one of them will benefit from some pruning or repotting. This need arises naturally, given the favorable conditions they've experienced during the warmer outdoor months. For plants that have become leggy or stretched out during the summer, it's advisable to trim back the extended growth. You should also trim the roots in proportion to the top growth. This helps the plant thrive in its current container, although if the root growth is excessive, you may need to consider potting it into a larger container. Some popular candidates for pruning include pothos, philodendron, tritiscantia, polka dot plants, nerve plants, citrus, and more. Remember not to prune more than one-third of a plant at a time and remove any spent leaves. If any of your plants have experienced significant growth, with roots protruding from the drainage holes or showing signs of stunted growth, it could be beneficial to repot. Although the ideal time for repotting is generally spring or early to mid-summer, now is just as suitable if your plant has grown substantially. However, don't delay this task for too much longer. Repotting is also recommended if you suspect the presence of millipedes, potato bugs, or earwigs in the soil. You can replace just the soil without moving the plant to a larger pot. Even if you simply want to refresh the soil, doing so before bringing your plant inside is the ideal timing. Failing to ease your plants into their new indoor environment over a few weeks can lead to a severe shock from the abrupt transition. Some leaf drop is to be expected when there's a significant change in their surroundings, but excessive drooping, particularly for more delicate species, should raise concerns. The most substantial change they'll face is the lighting. Above all else, this shift can be quite dramatic, especially since indoor plants will typically rely on light from just one window. To initiate the transition, start by bringing your plants indoors overnight for the first few days, taking them inside in the evening and returning them outdoors in the morning. Over the span of two weeks, gradually increase the amount of time your plant spends indoors until it's in the desired winter location. As you reduce the light exposure, new leaves should begin to develop as your plant adapts. Remember to provide the appropriate light levels based on your plant's specific requirements. Regarding watering, indoor plants generally need less water than when they're outside. With slowed growth, lower light levels, cooler temperatures, and occasional periods of dormancy, less water is necessary. During the winter, when in doubt, err on the side of caution and refrain from overwatering. Be vigilant, especially with species that thrive when their soil fully dries out, such as snake plants, cc plants, and succulents. Finally, indoor air tends to be drier due to the lower humidity and decreased air circulation caused by heating systems. Many houseplants require higher humidity levels to prevent leaf tips from turning yellow or brown or curling. To address this issue, group plants with similar humidity needs together to create a microclimate that benefits them all. If necessary, invest in a humidifier for the room to elevate humidity levels and benefit all the plants in that space. If you have a plant that is too large for indoors but you still want to keep it, consider taking cuttings and nurturing them indoors over the winter. Make sure the species is conductive to propagation through cuttings and follow the proper procedures. For plants that boast bulbs, tubers, or corms, such as caladium, oxalis, and alocasia, it's worth considering a different approach. You can opt to either prune these plants back substantially in their pots or completely remove them from the soil and overwinter them. However, it's crucial to consult specific care guidelines for each plant type, as improper treatment could lead to bulb or tuber damage by the end of winter. Wondering why you should take this route? Well, some plants require this treatment to ensure their long-term health and vitality. Additionally, it's a savvy space-saving strategy. 
You won't need to reserve your precious bright light spots for these particular plants during the winter months, allowing you to allocate them to other plants instead. Come spring, put them up again, ideally about a month before you plan to reintroduce them outdoors, giving them a head start on the growing season. As we conclude our journey through this essential guide to transitioning your beloved plants from the great outdoors back into the cozy indoors, we hope you're feeling empowered and well prepared for the upcoming season. Remember, the care and attention you provide during this critical phase can make all the difference in the health and happiness of your green companions. With a bit of planning, patience, and the right approach, you can ensure a smooth transition, safeguarding your plants against the potential stress and challenges that the changing environment may bring bring. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more awesome gardening tips and tricks. And if you really loved it and want to show some extra support, consider leaving a little something in the tip jar using the super thanks feature below. Your support helps me keep providing you with honest, top quality houseplant care tips, sponsor free, so your plants can keep on thriving. Now, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Did you find this video helpful? Do you have any questions or tips you'd like to share? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I appreciate your feedback and love learning from my fellow plant enthusiasts. Thanks for tuning in and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Remember, keep growing and keep thriving. See you in the next video.